This is a mushroom, a mushroom. A six foot mushroom that you can surf. Less people have ridden a mushroom surfboard than have been to the moon. It's hard to call ourselves the world's leading mushroom surfboard builders because we're the only ones willing to do it. Basically, we wanted to make the most sustainable board on the planet. If you look at the surf industry on a whole, we have a problem. A traditional surfboard is toxic. It is a petroleum-based foam that is open cell. So said board breaks, it will leach microtoxins into the environment. Without a healthy ocean, there would be no life on Earth. An ocean's under extreme threat from human impact, from carbon emissions, from climate change, from plastic pollution, through just human waste getting in the ocean. And we can clean that up, and we need to clean it up really fast. We're not at the point where we can just sustain this anymore. We need to fix it. We need to move forward, and we need to regenerate the problems that have been left to us. We might only replace 200 polyester boards a year, but that's 200 boards that aren't going to be here for 50,000 years. We figured the only way to really get into the industry is to rattle the cage a little bit and do something that the big guys, it's not even on their radar, do something outside of the box. We started in the garage. We were two blocks off the beach. You want to be able to stay on site and focus all your energy to one task. The garage is the place where you're free to fail. You know, you close that door, and no one has a clue that I'm growing a mushroom surfboard in there. It's just another garage. It's a mushroom, but it's not your grocery store mushroom. Mushrooms are nature's recyclers and repair mechanism. We can use mushrooms to clean up oil spills, to clean up toxic waste, even nuclear waste, and to help everything grow faster. So the mushroom surfboard is a brilliant example of how we can actually repair and regenerate Earth's ecosystems. Mycelium is the root of the mushroom, and it needs moisture and nutrients just like anything else, particularly darkness, and it needs that environment constantly. Mycelium grows very tight, like a fiber. It's been genetically designed to be an organic growing machine. And the technology is barely being explored. There's endless applications. This is a perfect alternative for anything that would be expanded polystyrene, basically, your basic styrofoam. We grew around 20 of them. Each one, we learned something else. Growing one big was the first challenge. While it's growing, it, it's alive, and it starts eating the material and replacing it with the white space, which is here. Two years of experimenting, several thousand dollars, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of hours of time, and every time we opened the box, it was just a mystery as to what, what was gonna be. There would be clover, like, in your garden, just all clover, no mushroom surfboard at all. Then we had to go from taking a mushy, big, moist lump and putting it into a dehydrator. I broke one in half trying to put it into the box by myself. There's nothing better, I guess, than failure for innovation. The first generation one was... Proof of concept. It was proof Definitely. of concept. It was <laughs> ugly. It was heavy. And then when we finally got one, that's when Dan had to take the ropes. I hand routed and hand sanded basically everything because if you machine sand, you run the risk of burning through on some spots and we didn't have the luxury of another blank. I had one shot at this. If you were to break it in the ocean, it biodegrades. The resin would become an eight, so it would just turn into sand essentially. And the actual core, anybody can eat it. The innovation of the actual mushroom surfboard was not just us. It was a collaboration and a huge effort from multiple people and multiple companies. Just making one surfboard creates a ton of waste. There's all these throwaway materials. What do you do with the fiberglass? What do you do with the excess resin? What do you do with the stir sticks, the brushes? Every single thing made to make that board it is trash. It inevitably ends up in a landfill. If you go into my shop now, Everything that you make a board with, there's a, there's a bin for it. I'm proving that, cool, I can do this. Why can't other shops do it? I mean, if you're a surfer, how do you not want to help a place become zero waste? So I got emailed a video of these mealworms devouring foam. It was time lapse. I had never heard anything like that, and I thought it was CGI. And that was Eddie Garcia and his Living Earth System. 
We take a surfboard, we put it with 5,000 worms, we have the 5,000 worms pretty much chew on it, we put it through a screening system. After the screening system, it gets treated with a mycelium, same thing that they're building the surfboard with. And all these things together, through a course of three months, are bringing it full circle back into 100% organic, nutritious fertilizer, basically. And that's sort of the process of how it works. So about 5,000 worms will break a board down in about a week. This should be a launch ramp for the larger municipal industries, restaurants. There's a lot of waste that comes in the form of EPS styrofoam. It stays on the planet for 3,000 years. It's a huge uh, problem on the planet right now. So what better way than be able to launch it through the surf industry and the cool factor that we have with it? California actually just took surfing as the official sport of the state. So most kids in California, they want to learn to surf. So what better way to inspire them to think out of the box than through surfing? That's the thing with eco boards, they've got to be just as good as their traditional toxic counterpart. So in 2017, there were 60,000 eco boards that we verified made globally by over 150 board builders in 25 different countries. It's taking off around the world now. We're invited to donate our first mushroom surfboard to the Surfing Heritage Museum. It's the Hall of Fame of surfing for board builders. Wow, look at these, Dan. Welcome to the Surfing Heritage. Nice to meet you, sir. It's amazing that this is completely 100% biodegradable. Who would have thought mushrooms surfboard? This is the future. We're honored to be the first museum uh, to be able to show a product like this. It's not just good for California, mm -hmm. it's good for the whole world. I don't want to say it's validation, but... <laughs> what are we going to do to, to set the stage for the rest of the world? And I, I do believe because of the diversity that's here in California, we should be the leaders and the innovators. We should change the status quo of what we're so used to, because what we're so used to hasn't really worked. Pro surfers are winning world championship events on eco boards, and everybody who's riding them can't tell a difference. So why wouldn't you do it? There's not really a change in performance between a standard board to an eco board because the technology is so advanced now. Uh, I think the cool part is the fact that you know what's going into your board and that it's helping the environment as opposed to hurting it. If you haven't surfed yet, go do it. It's soul changing. Surfing is the closest thing to, I guess, the dream of flying. It's hydro flying, basically. You get to express yourself however you want. There's no wrong way to do it. You're painting away. We put everything we had into getting this far and to have it here in our hands, having surfed it, having built a company around it. We're very proud of the fact that we grew a surfboard out of this. Out of this.